do an introduction for this channel um starting a second channel i've had one for a while but i'm revamping it to be more topic specific so i've had a, a channel called uh, hippocrates garden for quite a while and i just kind of threw a little bit of everything on there I'm going to try to make that one very gardening specific, um, almost like a gardening course with uh, different topics and eventually hopefully you'll be able to start at the beginning and kind of go through and have a lot of information that I've learned from other people. Not that I'm the ultimate expert on anything, but just passing on what I've learned. Uh, for more information on that one, go over to Hippocrates Garden. This channel is going to be basically everything else so i'm in northeast arkansas and have done many many things um grew up on a farm a row crop farm um, i've got degrees in psych and nursing so i've done mental health psych neuropsych testing i've done nursing as an lpn and an rn er hospice things like that um, I've been a firefighter, I've been a, an EMT, uh, part-time law enforcement, I've got about 80 hours of flying in Cessnas. I occasionally, if I ever have a chance, fly what's called a paramotor. Um, it's a little bit of aviation. I do have a drone, commercial drone license that I rarely, rarely ever fly because I don't have time. But my main thing that I'm doing here is I'm trying to create a little off-grid homestead like many, many, many other people. Now, this property is not gonna be off, off grid because there's nothing available and literally right above me are some power lines. So bisecting, I've got a property between five and 10 acres, somewhere in there, this particular one, and is bisected by a power line. Now it's, it's not even energized, it's kind of a bypass line. All they have to do is throw a jumper on. <clears throat> Out by the road, um, there is rural water there is hardline telephone, there is natural gas, there's fiber optic internet. I mean, all the service, everything other than sewer is right by the road. <clears throat> but I don't wanna hook up to any of it for many reasons. Um, so this is kind of my permaculture playground, off grid, getaway, um, thing like that. So I've been working on it for a little over two years, very, very slowly. Um, there are some family issues that uh, keep me from being able to put a lot of time into it. Hopefully that's gonna be changing, hence the new channel. A lot of what I'm focused on right now is power, solar. I've been playing around with solar for off and on for years. Um, very, very, very small systems. Well, for my off-grid system, I have been able to bring about a 20 something year old fifth wheel out. It's still in very, very good shape. <clears throat> it has got a 12 volt system as a part of the RV, like most RVs are, part of it's 12, part of it's 110. But, um, so it's, other than putting it on some kind of blocks or something a lot more stable, it does, I don't plan on it moving again. I'm gonna put a carport over it eventually to take some of the, uh, the sun beating down and some of that off of it keep it a little bit cooler and a lot of other things but back to the power the current systems that i have going i've kind of got depending on how you look at it maybe four systems <clears throat> these six panels are some of the smallest ones i've got and they're about 200 to 210 each um i think and they are new power n-e-w-p-o-w-a i just got off of amazon as i needed them i've got three of them in series charging a system in the shed i've got three of them in series doing the 12 volt system for the rv i have got a off-road golf cart kind of thing that is a 48 volt so this is 24 I and mean, this is 12 volt what's in there currently is 24 volt back there this is 48 and then i've got a shipping container that's got a diy battery that i was using and right now i don't have anything hooked to it charging so again three channel three panels go into this three panels go in there series each um still got a lot of wiring to do to clean up but i'm but i'm not done rearranging all of this the 
battery instead of a single 12 volt battery that normally would be up in there. I've got eight six volt deep cycle lead acid, flooded lead acid batteries. So these eight batteries are configured um, in a 12 volt, a, a pretty good size 12 volt battery bank. Charge controller, all the other bits and bobs are back there. So that does the 12 volt system. Do not have the 110 system fully operational. I mean, it works, it's just not plugged in. That's for shoreline. So when I need 110 at the moment, I'm using this 3000 watt inverter connected directly to the batteries. And it is what I've been using to do larger tools if I want to run the microwave or something. So since the 110 system is not plugged into anything, um, I use that for my largest 110 loads, whether it's water, whether it's microwave, whether it's a, a planer or bigger tools or something of that nature. That is just a Harbor Freight um, 12 volt to 3000 um, watt uh, modified sine wave inverter and it and it works and i've got a 2000 amp or a watt up in the, the store the uh shipping container as well it works but i don't necessarily like it and it's kind of a pain the goal is to have a large large victron system in here <clears throat> this building was just a storage building in my back of my yard when I lived in Marion, Arkansas, about 50 miles away. It did have the big double doors on one end. And when I moved it over here, I put the big double doors to the back and then I filled them in because they're not secure. So that back wall used to be the big double doors. I have put in uh, a regular exterior door here. The system that I'm currently running is just kind of a mishmash. Get this out of the way. It works, but it, it's it's a temporary. So I've got 12 volt, 100 amp hour, ampere time or lead time, lithium ion phosphate batteries. I've got four of them, and I have them configured in 24 volt. So two in series, two in series, those in parallel. So that's a 24 volt system. Um, being charged by three of those panels from a little Renogy um, Rover Elite charge controller. It's what, 20 amps? <clears throat> so 20 amps at 48 volts. It's a decent amount of power. The inverter is just a small 24 volt, 500 watt um, Victron. So 500 watt it'll do it'll charge my batteries it'll run the light it'll run my starter link it'll do a lot of that stuff but it won't really run a tool so that's one of the problems so every time i want to run a big tool here or even like the little air compressor i have to run it over to the rv and that other inverter with a big long cable and that's kind of annoying i've got a refrigerator here and it can do 12 volt and 24 volts so it is plugged directly into this system I do have monitoring. Um, the Phoenix has got Bluetooth. The shunt that I use for monitoring has got Bluetooth. And then I've got a Global Link 520, which takes all of that and sends it out through cellular network every 15 minutes, sends a packet. And that's how I know what this system's doing. I got the same thing on the RV. Um, and I've also got the same thing on the golf cart. So all three of those have Global Link 520s going through cellular. So I can pull that up anywhere I'm at the internet and see what the system is doing. Now, those panels <clears throat> in full sun, I get about, what, 1200 watts in perfect alignment, full sun, which is not bad. And no more than I'm down here, I am generating a lot more power than I need. And that is even with, so I mean, these are pointed due south, so the sun in the morning, I don't really get a whole lot until probably about 10. And then here in about an hour or so, I'll be losing it. It's already starting to shade a little bit. Um, some of these, you can already see maybe a little bit of shading. So that's already, and these are in series, so that's going to be affecting it significantly. But all the batteries are full. 
So at the moment, um, as small as this system is, I'm still doing generating more than I need, but I'm hoping to be down here a lot more often. So I need to optimize this a little more. And there's a lot of energy being left on the table that I'm not storing in these batteries. By the way, the mount, that is an EG4 bright mount, bright mount. Um, I like it. Um, I, I'm, <clears throat> I think it's extremely well made. I wish I had some caps for that. And this is the first version, so it's not adjustable. And the new version that you get right now is adjustable. They're about $270, so $270, $280. Um, and they'll hold you know, six of these 200 watt panels probably uh, just depends on how big your panels if you've got three to four hundred watt panels you might get four on there <clears throat> uh, the eco flows seem to be pretty good as well i've sent a couple of those to a buddy of mine they seem to be pretty good and they're basically make unistrut looking ones so but so the pro part of the project today is to begin moving to the next phase of this system now this rv like most rvs you have got shore power that can be plugged in this one is a 30 amp supply so it can do 30 amps um that 3000 watt inverter would probably do it but it's 12 volt and i don't want to have to redo those 12 volt batteries into another one to run off of that that'd be a small battery bank for this um also when i plug into shore the way the rvs are normally wired once you're plugged into shore it then charges the 12 volt batteries well i'm charging those right now off of solar so it's kind of complicated but i want to get even though i can't i'm not going to have my full system up and running yet i want to get a system in here that i can then wire here put all six of those panels at the same in some way charging a bigger system slightly bigger system in here which will power the rv 110 and 12 volt at the same time as it's designed to do and hopefully be pure sine wave as well for the microwave for any computers things of that nature so that's part of the uh project and start working on that eventually this whole wall at least two thirds of it is going to be the big solar system. So it is a Victron. I've got two Quattros that are 10,000 watts each. And they will, they're will they supposed to be already programmed and configured for split phase, for 240 split phase. So two big Quattros, a big charge converter, uh, charge controller that will take 250 volts, up to 250 volts coming in, two MPPTs in that one box, and charge 48 volt battery bank plus the um, bus bars and all that the battery system i have a single rack so a full rack of six batteries from eg4 in a cage that i've got to put together that will go there and probably have a second and maybe even a third the goal is to have a system big enough to run this whole property if i put up a shop if i have two or three cabins whatever i want to do on this property this will be the electronic and the battery part of the system and eventually as i clear more space i'll be able to get more panels for the moment because i'm still working on this shed still working on the ceiling uh, things of that nature i don't want to put all of that in here especially the quattros the really expensive electronics that don't need to get too dusty in here but the battery should be okay so in this corner and i've got the power line the solar line coming in that's charging this whole system <coughs> coming through the floor right there anyway i'm going to empty this out and i'm going to put that rack of batteries big battery bank right here and i have an eg4 all in one um to go on top of that that all in one you'll see in a little bit it will accept ac in whether it's from a grid or from a generator it'll accept solar coming in up to 500 volts twice what the quad what the uh victron will up to 500 volts coming in um, from the solar it will charge the batteries it is the charge controller for the batteries and it is a 3000 watt inverter pure sine wave so it will run the rv just fine 
Um, the, the biggest load for the RV is the air conditioner, which I don't even think, I'm not even sure whether it works or not. If it does, I might use it in emergency, but I don't plan on using it long term. I plan on putting a mini split, which is much more efficient on the RV. But without the air conditioner, the biggest load in there is a microwave and it's only about a thousand watts. So this should do just fine. I just need to clean this out a little bit, put the batteries, mount the uh, all in one and begin probably put in a sub panel probably about a four circuit sub panel because i want um obviously the 30 amp circuit for the rv but i'd like to have a, a 110 circuit in two or three outlets in here i'd like to have a 110 circuit on the outside um so i can plug in tools and things for you know just an outside plug-in including maybe using uh, initially using that to charge the golf cart um, I do have, there's a whole new other system I've, I've got the bits and pieces and have used, but it's not set up permanently to make the golf cart independent as far as charging and stuff. But anyway, I've got limited time. This is what I'm going to get to work on here. So I'm going to see if I can set this camera up, get a couple things out of the way, do some moving around and see if I can't begin the process of putting that together and i've got my starlink up because i've also got a class that starts at around four o'clock that i'm going to try to watch at least a little bit of today with verge permaculture on this kind of stuff